Hey everybody, how's it going? So today we're going to be working on yet another dead MacBook. This is a MacBook Air that says it needs board repair. This is an A1466, one of the last models made before they took the L and started using the butterfly keyboards and the, all that r rubbish. So let's open this up and see what's going on with it and see if we can make it work again. There we have the MacBook. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to unplug the battery from this MacBook. After unplugging the battery, I'm going to plug in my MagSafe power adapter, and I'm also going to get the charging, amperage, all that good stuff showing up on the screen over here so you can see how much amperage it's taking. Knowing how much amperage it's taking is going to tell me interesting clues. Now this one takes 66 milliamps, has no green light in the charger. Let's try and figure out why we don't have a green light in the charger. So first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to remove the board from its casing so that I can examine it properly. The board has been removed from the MacBook. So the first thing we're going to do, since we weren't getting a green light, is check and see that PP3V42 underscore G3Hot is present. And now it is present. Wow. Instead of taking 70 milliamps, it's taking 6 milliamps. That's interesting because we just went from one version of broken to another version of broken. Quite strange. So the first thing I'm going to do here is check and see that PP3V42 underscore G3Hot is present. And from what I see here, it looks like it is. Next up, PP bus G3 hot. So what I'm doing here is I'm going down a list of available power rails. This is an 820-00165 board. And if I have the machine come in with an issue of not turning on, then what I'm going to want to do is look through the power rails. So no power. Let's check out the power rails and see if any of those rails are missing. Just like on your desktop PC, you have those Molex connectors, so you have the 12 volts, 5 volts, and ground on there. You know, you, you get if you, even if you don't really work on laptop boards like this, you have an idea of what the what power rails mean just from that basic understanding of having built a computer. And that's what we're looking at here. Now, I go through this list and I check out my rails. Now, G3 hot rails are rails that are always on. S5 rails are going to be rails that are only on when the machine is off. S4 rails are rails that are going to be on when the machine is hibernating. SO rails are rails that are going to be on when the machine is on. And S3 rails are rails that are going to be on when the machine is sleeping. So we're going to go through the list of rails on this machine and see what's going on with it. So let's check out something like PPVRTC underscore G3 hot. It says it's located on the other side of the board. So I just flip my board over and make a quick measurement right here. And it's not showing up. So let's take a look there. So remember, I, first I go through all of my G3 hots, then my S5s, then my S4s, then my S3s, then my SOs. So in order to have your an S3 rail, all your S4s got to be present. In order to have an S4 rail, all your S5s have to be present. In order to have S5 rails, all of your G3 hots have to be present, and so on and so forth. So I don't have PPVRTC underscore G3 hot, so we're going to take a look at the board and see what that... Oh, well, there you go. What do you all see over here? See that green stuff? That's corrosion. That is corrosion. Now, I wonder if that capacitor over there has short-circuited its way to ground, and if that's the result, it's shorting that power rail to ground. Well, let's see. So I can turn my multimeter to resistance or ohms mode and get this on the screen and see what the resistance is here. 1.4 ohms. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to professionally flick that off the board, like poof. Look at that. See, I'm a professional. I can knock components off like that. Don't try that at home, kids. It's only left to professionals. And scrape there. Let's see if my short is gone now. Now we're getting 28 milliohms. So it looks like that capacitor that had that little bit of corrosion on it was causing a short circuit, and that short circuit was keeping it from working. So I'm going to add a little bit of flux there, some solder, and put a new cap there. Now this is going to work without that cap there. There's a lot of capacitors on PPVRTC underscore G3 hot. There's a lot of caps on that rail already. 
So if one of them's missing in that area, it's not going to be the end of the world here. Even though this is close to the clock crystal, but I've had machines run just fine with that missing and not freeze or anything. But it's still a good idea to put it back. Alright, so where I ripped that cap off the board, you're going to see that I just able to magically bring it back. I didn't even remove the pad. Again, that's not something that I would do at home. It's going to be a lot of practice before you can do stuff like that. Jess does it on stream regularly and makes it look easy, but Jess has been doing it for like six years now, so. Okay. Uh, I'm going to take another capacitor from a donor MacBook Air and we're going to replace it. And when I replace it, it's probably going to work. And once it works, Paul is going to probably scream at me. And the reason he would scream at me is because I managed to pick all these boards at random. And they always manage to be fixable. Whereas the boards that Paul chooses, even when he tries to choose ones, he winds up getting the ones that are not fixable. Poor bastard. Everybody type F in the chat for Paul. Paul S. Now one of the things I was talking about in the previous video is that I keep the board I'm working on under the microscope and I, if when I'm stealing a component from a donor board, I don't do that in the microscope. It makes things more efficient for me. So if I'm moving something from one board to another with my tweezers, it's not, I can't put this down on the desk and then move everything. Like, this is not going to work. If you look at this, these components are ridiculously small. Once I put that component down, it's disappearing into the fifth dimension. So I have my desk. This is my donor board. I use my eyes. I pick it up. And I don't care if I'm knocking stuff off around it because this is a donor board. This board is a complete piece of junk. I don't care if I ruin it. So I remove my cap, and then I go into the microscope over here to do my actual work. It's, it's much more efficient than, like, uh, than what uh, my many people do, which is, okay, I'm going to take the cap off of here, and I've had so many students do this. They take the cap off, like, oh, shit, what do I do now? And then they're like, they're, they, okay, they, they find a place to put this board, then they grab this, and, oh, look, this board's tangled on a wire, so I twist it, and they do this, and by that time, the component they had in their tweezer, it's gone. It's done. It flew away because, you, you know, it's, it's this tiny. So, F for the man named Paul. Indeed, F for the man named Paul. So anyway, we replaced that capacitor, and now we're going to see if this works. And it probably is going to work, and Paul's probably going to be really mad at me because I got one that was fairly simple and straightforward. And what do you know, the fan is spinning. Look at that. Random. Random. So, as I was saying about the power rails over here, and this is an important thing to know, very important, it's something that I do go over in my document that is linked down below, and that is a freely available document that you can read. It's about a 100 or 150 page guide on introduction to board repair. It's an important document, and it's available, as I said, for free. So when you have no power, I like to go to this page on the schematic called Power Aliases, and it's going to be called Different Things in Different uh, for different schematics for different machines. But on the MacBook, it's the power aliases page. And on that list, it's going to give you a list of the different power lines that are required in that machine. And if some of these are missing, it's not going to work right. So there's going to be prefaces to all this. Let's just go over what these things mean. So there's a prefix and a suffix. The preface is usually, prefix is going to tell you what that power line is, how many volts to expect there, and the suffix is going to tell you when to expect it. So over here, let's just take an example of PP3V3 underscore S4. PP3V3 underscore S4, right? Yeah. So PP3V3 underscore S4. PP3V3, 3.3 volts. The V is often a decimal point, so 3.3 volts. S4 will be present when in an S4 state when the machine is hibernating. If we check out PPDC in G3 hot, DC in, like the uh, charger. Anytime the charger's plugged in, that rail's going to be on. G3 hot, it's on all the time. PP bus G3 hot, that's a rail that's going to be present all the time. That's the rail for the battery. If we check out PP5 ES5, 5 volts that's going to be present when you're in an S5 state. And remember, when it comes to states, G3 hot, always on. S5, that rail is on when the computer's off. S4, that rails are on when the computer's hibernating. S3, that rails on when the computer's sleeping. SO, that rail is going to be on when the machine is actually working in front of you and running programs. So, for example, 
an S3 rail would be a rail for memory. So when you put the computer in sleep or suspend mode, your programs, all it remembers what you're doing in all your programs because the RAM is what's storing everything. So in order for it to go to sleep, the RAM has to be getting power, even if stuff like the, uh, the screen or the CPU, which are SO rails, are not. And SO rail is going to be something like the CPU, the graphics chip, the screen backlight, stuff like that. That is, those are rails that have to be present when the machine is on. And you need your S5s and S4s in order to get your S3s and SOs. It's like a pyramid. So if these are not present, these rails are actually often creating those rails. But further, if these rails are not on, the computer checks itself and says, well, these are not on. We're not going to turn on the rest. So it starts these, then these, then these, then these in a sequence. So let's say, uh, why, let's just bring up why this is important. So let's say that you check and you see that PP5 ESO is present but the machine is not turning on. Well, you just save yourself some time. You don't got to go through this entire list and check every single rail because that's going to be a waste of time. Why am I going to check all these S3s and SUS and G3 Hot and S5 and all that other stuff? No, if the machine's not turning on but you have a single SO rail present, that means that all you got to check are the other SOs. Now, if you check an S4 rail, and even the S4 rail is not present, then that means that that's going to be a, l a little bit less fun because that means now you've got to check everything. You're going to have to go through uh, every single rail to figure out which is the one that's short-circuited or potentially not turning on, and it's less fun. So this machine turns on now. We had a short to ground on PPVRTC underscore G3 hot. That is a rail responsible for creating the clock voltage, and we knocked off a cap fix the short, replace the cap just to be nice, and it works. We're going to run this board through the ultrasonic cleaner because the, this board had a bit of um, liquid on it, and even if that was all I could see with my eyes, I don't quite trust it. I can see this layer with my eyes, but I can't see underneath chips like this. So this over here, I can't see underneath the CPU or underneath the system management controller. I can see this layer, but chips like this that have 90 balls under them or chips like this that have 900 balls under them, I can't see that with my eyes. So I don't know if there's corrosion happening under there. So to prevent any sort of corrosion from occurring into the future, I will put this board through an ultrasonic cleaner. Available at store.rossmangroup.com. And that's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. Excellent at data recovery, not the best cameraman. What happened, Steve? Dude, you lost your MacBook box right on my fucking stomach. Oh. What do you think is going to happen if you're standing there? It's a but you didn't run through it. You went through it and pushed through it. Jeez.